No problem. Yeah. Uh, so, how are you doing, Roslyn? Uh, not bad. Are you diving under the PyTorch implementation? Oh, nice, nice. Are you uh, also a PhD student? I kind of forgot. Starting from uh, next year. Oh, nice. Where? Japan, Kobe University. Oh, awesome, awesome. Do you know your specialty? Is it is your specialty going to be reinforcement learning or? Yes, mostly reinforcement learning. Currently, I'm also considering a little bit of unsupervised learning, but it's more about the models that they use there. If possible, I would like to fuse the two. Mm -hmm. But for now, yes, I mainly like focus on reinforcement learning. I see. I see. Well, that's and awesome. My presence here. Yes. Yes. That's wonderful. Um, I think there is a another one. Uh, another you... one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, at some point, uh, I think I asked his uh, his actual name, amateur developer, but I, I kind of forgot. Are you Are you here, amateur developer? <laughs> Hey, hi. Uh, I'm here. Uh, could you could you type your real name in the chat? I'm sorry, oh, I kind yeah. of. Sure. <laughs> That's my name. Ah, uh, I see. I see. Oh, you're the one. Uh, uh, corrected the time. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, you're the one who corrected the time. Yeah. 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 Ye
My Sudoke, did you attend our last meeting by any chance? Hello, um, no, I didn't. Um, I'm the scammer in the Slack channel. Okay. Um, uh, okay. Uh, really, I'm sorry. It's five in the morning right now, and I just fell uh, out of bed. Well, uh, well, thank you so much for joining. It must be a lot. It's yeah, it's it's a lot of effort for you to wake up in such a early morning. How do you how do you how do you pronounce your name? Uh, just uh, just call me May. My name is May. Okay, sounds good. Excellent. Uh, all right, so I think uh, we should be good, uh, and let's kick things started. Um, right, and I already got the recording uh, going, so nice. So I'll be posting the recordings online afterwards. Um, okay, so I think I'll go ahead and do the presentation just to give you guys a quick rundown of, of, of the algorithm, of, uh, of the major aspect. Then we can talk about some of the questions uh, that we have. I have quite a bit of questions when I was reading the paper. Um, okay, uh, so here we go. Uh, this is going to be our first literature week on the software actor critic topic. And in the following weeks, we're going to be doing implementations uh, for two weeks. And lastly, we'll do integration week to sort of compare uh, everyone's implementation and try to integrate the best one. Um, so the topic is the software actor critic algorithm. And the original paper is listed in this link. Oh, also, let me post this on the Slack channel so that everyone, if you want to check out the uh, PowerPoint, uh, you, you'll have a copy. To this. Share, get a shareable link. Uh, I'll also share the folder so that every uh, presentation is um, the the folder that contains the presentation will be uh, shared as well. Uh, so a couple useful resources that I found when I was reading the paper uh, is first of all the soft key learning paper. Uh, the software actor, actor critic paper has a lot of connection with uh, what soft key learning is. Uh, it helped explain some of the uh, uh, the concepts that that are mentioned in the software actor critic paper. And uh, there's also this interesting paper that I read. It's called The, the Equivalence Between Policy Gradient and Soft Cue Learning. Um, the authors basically establish this uh, equivalence and argue why they're uh, basically doing the same thing. And also, uh, I found this uh, blog uh, that helps me understand the A3C paper quite a bit uh, because it's basically a, a, a very well written summary of what the A3C uh, of the essay of what the SC, SAC paper is about. Um, okay, so now let's get into the paper. And for some reason, there should be a couple graph here. Okay, I see. Let me delete this slide. Uh, so okay, so a quick rundown of the paper. Uh, before uh, we do that, uh, so there's a couple definitions that we need to be aware of. So uh, first of all, what is the soft Q value? And sorry, another person just joined. Let me hit admit. OK, uh, so a quick rundown of the paper. A couple things we need to keep in mind. Uh, so if uh, So we want to know the entropy of a probability distribution. And uh, this is taken from OpenAI spinning up. Uh, let x be a random variable with probability mass or density function p. And the entropy definition of x uh, is computed from its uh, distribution p according to this equation. And uh, uh, keep that information in mind, and we're going to define what the soft value function is. So this is the soft value function. And if you notice this part of the equation, the VST is equal to the expectation of following the policy of QSTAT. 
that's basically the uh, the definition for a, a regular value function, right? But uh, the soft value function also included this entropy term, which is this negative log pi ATST. And that's what this part uh, of the entropy definition is. So the way I understand it is that this, the soft value function is basically adding the value, which is the QSTAT, and the, the term that defines the entropy of the distribution. So your value is basically the original value function plus um, the entropy uh, of, your, of your actor. And the way how you would define the Q value is basically through this iteration. You have the real reward plus the discounted factor times the expectation of the value function at the next state, uh, of the soft value function of the next state. So that's uh, sort of how they define it. Um, okay, so now that we have those definition, uh, we can sort of go through this algorithm. So what they started uh, is they have uh, three parameterization. They have the policy with policy uh, with parameters theta, uh, and then just, just a yeah quick course. interjection. Yes, of course. The previous slide. Uh, sorry, one second. In the previous slide, mm -hmm. you mainly focused on the soft state value function, but I think in another paper. In this case, they instead declare the soft Q value function and then declare the soft state value as a function of that Q function. I, I don't mm -hmm. know if you... You don't it's like... It's like a chicken and egg problem. Yes, yes. Uh, but I think according to the paper, um, so the Q value function... Uh, so, right, uh, whether there's chicken first or eggs first. But I think in the paper, they're basically treating this Q S T A T as any sort of parameterization. They don't really care whether this, this is going to be true. But uh, so if we look at the paper uh, where they have this lemma that I, ha that I had a really hard time understanding what they're trying to say. Uh, right. Um, Let's see. Right, uh, for a fixed policy, the soft Q value can be computed iteratively from any function Q, S, A, uh, to R. So uh, I guess from the sentence, uh, the feeling that I get is that they don't really care about what the Q is initially, but once uh, it does this sort of uh, lemma, then this Q value will converge to the soft Q value. So uh, to sort of address this discussion, I guess we can just treat that we just automatically have this Q uh, right off the bat, and then we have the value function um, uh, so that we can keep updating it. Does that I, I, mm -hmm. I have a question. Um, so, so I guess uh, I can't really see who is speaking. So, if you have a question, uh, it would be great if you can say your name and say your question. Ah, okay. So, so this is normal. I have a question. Yeah. So here in this theorem, they say that uh, when you apply this uh, backup operator continuously over a period of time, uh, then it converges to your soft Q value as the k tends to infinity, right? Yes. Uh, do we do you have an idea about how the soft Q value function looks like? Um, so um, I have, uh, I don't have a example or idea, but the the feeling that I get when I read this part of the paper, it seems this is basically uh, an end step Q learning. It seems to me you're basically saying I'm adding this plus this and plus another RST another expectation of the next value function, you're kind of doing this iteratively so that to make it converge to the soft Q value. I could be wrong, but that's the feeling that I get. And maybe uh, for the interest of this discussion, uh, since the lemmas are sort of uh, difficult to understand, maybe uh, what we should do is to sort of go over the algorithms first, and then we can look back on the theory of those two lemmas. Um, yep, sounds good. Okay. Uh, yeah, let me, so let me continue on that. Uh, 
just one thing, um, in terms of when you want to see the, that self-core Q value uh, function, Q function, just check the AP equation. And uh, well, I don't know which page is it, but it is the uh, AP equation in, in the paper. Um, uh, I have to say, I have a hard time listening to you. There's a lot of noise in your mic. I'm sorry. Um, do you mind write it down in the chat, maybe? Um, yeah, so I guess we, we can keep going on uh, with this presentation, and then uh, when when he finished writing it in the chat, and then we can discuss about it. Um, so a quick rundown of the paper is that you have three uh, three functions, basically. You have the policy with a parameter uh, theta, which is this pi theta, your actor. And then you have this soft Q value function parameterized by W, which is this QW. And then you have the soft state value function parameterized by I actually don't know how to pronounce this. Um, and then you have your V. Um, so it's mentioned in the paper that they can theoretically infer V uh, by knowing Q and pi. But in practice, uh, they use this separate parameter to help stabilize the training. And I think he just finished writing in the uh, chat. So let's take a look. Uh, you can see the soft Q function in the eighth equation of the paper. Okay. Uh, yeah. Isn't this eight basically? I think that's this. That's already the practical implementation. Oh, I see. I see. Yes, yes. So I think this is just saying if we apply this operation, this lemma is more of a theoretical result. If we apply this. Uh, iteratively, then it's going to converge to the soft uh, soft uh, Q value. But practically speaking, this is going to be how they formulate it. Also, they already include the target weight, the target the value function. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. That's this uh, parameter, right? Uh, let me just Google it. Never mind. It doesn't really. Yeah, I don't know if I can paste it in the chat. Uh, hey, but in uh, the soft. Uh, uh, it's no yes, idea. I'm sorry for in, interjecting. So, uh, in one of the references that you mentioned in your slides, I think, uh, hold on a second. It's slide, uh, yeah, in useful resources, the first point, you refer to soft Q learning paper, uh, reinforcement learning with deep energy base. What oh, is in that? When you look at the first theorem, they actually define the soft Q function. Uh, yes. Uh, so, Absolutely, uh, I remember that. Uh, but the thing is, just... yeah, it's this part, right? Um, yep. I have to say though, uh, by just reading this part, I think when reading the Q cell function it makes sense to me. But what doesn't make sense is this part. Um, so again, uh, maybe we should probably go over the algorithm and then we can oh, discuss okay. about the theory. Nothing but the expectation over uh, actions. For, for what? I think with the expectation over actions. Are you talking yeah, about this actions, part? Oh, I'm, I'm talking about the V soft function that you said you didn't understand. Oh, I see. I see. Uh, so the integral, that is nothing but the expectations over the actions. OK, I see. Um, yeah, yeah we can. We consider the action space to be continuous in, uh, in this approach. OK, I see. Um, maybe we should get back to this. Uh, so that we can uh, also go over more details uh, about this. But for now, uh, maybe just, yeah, I was hoping to give a, give a quick rundown of the paper so that. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, continue. Sorry. No, 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 it's fine. Uh, I, I, yeah, I, uh, every discussion is welcome. I, um, but I, I guess I was just thinking maybe if we kind of discuss too much theory, then we just kind of get lost in the detail. Uh, and maybe by the end of the talk, uh, we might not even have the chance to finish the whole paper, uh, to finish the algorithm. So, um, okay. So now that we have those three things, those three functions, the policy, the soft Q value function, and the soft state value function, um, 
and then they basically say this is how we're going to optimize the uh, the, va uh, the value function. So they have a cost function, and and what that's going to do is going to be the value of the current state um, minus the expectation of the Q value minus the log. So what is this? Let's see. So that's this part, right? The value function. So how can that be different? Uh, right. I think the reason be, uh, that they're uh, be, the reason why they are different is because they are using this um, parameter uh, to create sort of a target value function, and that's why they optimize it this way. And then further. Uh, was someone going to say something? Uh, actually, to optimize the state value function, mm -hmm. they use the Q, the expectation of the Q function. Mm -hmm. And uh, to optimize the Q function, I think they use the expectation of the state value function. So it's a little bit of like uh, interchanging the target value to reduce uh, something, I think. If okay. I'm not mistaken. But you should probably go ahead and. Yeah. Uh, yeah, let's take a look at how they optimize a Q value function. Uh, I uh, optimize a Q function. That's probably uh, maybe a more interesting part. So, how do they optimize it? Um, so the way they optimize it is also uh, it's basically a mean squared error of the Q value minus the current reward plus the gamma times the expectation uh, of the value function. Yeah, it is kind of circular, I have to say. Um, but it uh, okay. Never mind. I think this is the case when they use the target value function. Um, uh, I think ideally, what you would do is that you would uh, optimize. You you try to learn the Q value function and uh, V function. Mm -hmm. so the Q, value, Q function and the V function separately, you learn into convergence, but that is usually, it, it doesn't work. So what they do is they jointly optimize it. And how they do it is that for iteration one, they sort of like update the value function and for and, and then they fix the value function and then they update the Q function and they keep doing it uh, till you sort of like converge. Um, I think I that's see. what is happening here. I see, I see. Um... Okay, I see. So, um, sorry, I'm, uh, uh, I tried to read this paper multiple times, uh, but a lot of details still kind of expi uh, isn't exactly cl uh, clear in my head. I guess this is also the reason why we should do the actual implementations, right? Um, yes. Yeah. And so, if you look at the general algorithm at the page, well, there's no page. But algorithm one in the paper, yes, there is a, the order of the optimization. Mm -hmm. I think uh, there is a, also a hidden key point in the order. Mm -hmm. Don't you think so? Uh, a hidden what in the order? The, the key point in the order, they optimize oh, the, I see, I see. the respective state value and the Q value functions. Uh, maybe for the neural network's perspective, it doesn't matter um, because in a way they're initialized fairly randomly. Uh, but I think it helps us to understand uh, as to as, uh, yeah, the order, like uh, which one you should do first, maybe. Um, but I think the, the chunk of this algorithm is basically try to understand how they implement the value function, uh, the cost function of the value function, as well as the cost function for the Q value. And, and the policy. Yeah, and, and how do you optimize the policy? So this is the, so everything here, everything here, uh, the value function and the Q value function, you don't see any connection between uh, the Q value and the actor critic. From what you see here, this is, uh, this is probably soft queue learning. You don't see any actor. It's only after when you do the optimization on the actor when you see there's a connection between the soft queue learning and the policy gradient, where uh, they're trying to minimize the chaos divergence 
which is a measurement, uh, which is a measure as to how different are two distributions. So trying to measure the difference between the distribution uh, of your policy, as well as this weird thing right here, which is the exponent of the soft Q value function divided by um, the normalized um, distribution. So this is the part that I actually don't understand. Uh, does anyone uh, does anyone have any insights on the optimization on the actor? Welcome to the club. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, I'm not exact. I'm not sure I understand how you go from the first equation to the second equation in your slide. Uh, the, the what equation? The first equation where you have exponential divided by some z function. Oh, right. And, and in the second, you mm. actually subtract it by the log. Right. So that yeah. part I can I can explain. So that part is uh, is an application of the algebra. So what they do is uh, they use um, essentially what what it was doing is exponent of log of z s t, and because of the exponent rule, you can sort of add them oh, together. Oh. Wait, wait a second. So the z is inside the exponent. Ah, okay. Now it makes sense. Yes. Sorry. Exactly. I thought it was outside. Ah, okay. Yeah, some some little algebra. See, this is why you know having a reading group helps because uh, something <laughs> that might be simple for you, uh, something might be difficult for you, could be simple for any of us. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's great. Um, yeah, does anyone else know exactly what they're trying to say here, and? And why is this term on the right, the exponent of the, key, of the soft key value divided by this z, why is it a uh, distribution, I guess? Uh, OK, I actually have some intuition into this. So what we are trying to do is that uh, we want to make sure that the policy that we are trying to learn is, is Gaussian. Mm -hmm. OK. So and, and here you could see that the pi uh, dash Mm -hmm. It is actually sampled from your uh, capital product sign. And this product sign is actually a Gaussian distribution. Uh, it's, it's a, yeah. Uh, capital sign uh, where exactly? Uh, under the argument. The, I'm sorry. The product sign. The product sign? Oh, the, the like, like the little period here? No, under the argument, you have x uh, pi tilde is an element of product sign. Okay. Uh, does that make sense? Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, you were saying something about the ottoman. What is Ar it? Admin, uh, under the argument. Minimum argument. Argument. Okay. Um, okay. So, sorry. Keep going on uh, with uh, with the, uh, with what you were gonna say about the okay. intuition, please. And and the q the q function that is learned it is not exactly a probability distribution. So, what you do is that you take an exponent of this q function and you try to divide it with, by a normalization factor. This is very similar to sigmoid function if you think about it. Okay. Oh, sorry, not uh, softmax. Yeah, yeah, sigma, uh, softmax. Sorry, softmax. Yeah, right. Oh, okay. So that's probably where the uh, soft term comes from because the way they formalize it here, right? Maybe. Uh, maybe, maybe. I'm not sure. Yeah. But that, that is where you get this exponential and your zeta from. Since zeta is a uh, sorry z, since z is a normalization factor, it doesn't near, uh, really affect your uh, expectation so it disappears or something like that if i remember that okay so the uh, sort of sort of the takeaway is this part sort of acts like a softmax function therefore it outputs a probability distribution therefore it's comparable yeah. to the to the actor and then you can do this optimization by minimizing the kl divergence yep yep okay i can take that um yeah, and uh, if we have all those things, and then uh, we can basically do the optimization. As far as the environment is concerned, it seems fairly straightforward. 
you initialize all of the functions for the uh, actor for the q value uh, for the sub q value sub the value function and then you run the episodes store them in the replay memory and then for each gradient step um every time you want to update you basically update according to the cost function you're minimizing the cost function that are mentioned in the previous slides and uh, lastly you're updating the target uh, target network values every once in a while um, so yeah that seems to be the the general idea of the paper and now yeah any, anyone uh, we can we can discuss uh, anything really um, if anyone wants to jump in Uh, I would like to talk, talk about how they compute the gradients. Okay. So uh, usually uh, when you when you come, try to compute the gradient of an expectation, what you do is that when you try to do Monte Carlo integration, when the integration is, uh, integral is really hard to compute. Okay. And then you sort of take a gradient of this Monte, Monte Carlo uh, integration. But... From what I understand, they are just taking one particular value rather than taking an average over n values. And are you referring to any particular equation number so that uh, everyone... uh, all the gradients? If you look at all the gradients, they're just mentioning it in, in a way where they're not using Monte Carlo integration, and it's a little bit confusing to me. Okay. Um... So I, I personally don't uh, are not very familiar with. Uh, the way you calculate gradients with respect to expectation. Uh, the way how I usually deal with this kind of thing is uh, really the cost function is uh, what really matters to, to me, at least when I do the implementation. As long as I know which parameters that I should optimize and I have a cost function based on that parameter, then I sort of uh, let the gradient to be dealt by the optimizer. Um, but th does anyone know, uh, uh, does anyone have any uh, comments on the gradient calculation? Just give it to Otto Grad. <laughs> yeah, that, that's... Okay, that. but does the Otto Grad actually compute expectation as well? I, I'm not sure. I don't think so. So the expectation, right? The expectation is not really... Uh, so what do you mean by computing the expectation? I think uh, since we use uh, experience replay to sample from it empirical data and just take the mean, that's what it's an equivalent to expectation. Yeah, exactly. But they don't mention it here in the gradient update step. That is what I have problem with. Oh, like the uh, right. like they should have mentioned the ST is sampled from the gradient uh, from the uh, uh, experience replay. Yeah, and also they have to do sort of like an averaging over different samples that they sample from the uh, replay buffer. Well, I but think it's not... it's sort of mentioned here, isn't it? The ST go from the D. Ah, but the sixth equation, they don't mention it. Oh, I think that might be just a notational simplification. Um, ah, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, because... Uh, I was really confused when I read this, and then I have to go back and uh, look at the spinning... Uh, up implementation to understand what they're doing. Uh-huh, yeah. Um... Actually, regarding the spin-up implementation, I think there is quite a bit of difference between, uh, for, exa for example, uh, when they optimize the policy, there is no such thing as a DKL between the mm -hmm. new policy and the, the exponential of the soft Q function. Really? Does anyone remember that part? Yes. They basically just... Uh, to the gradient of pi times log pi, and that's it. Oh, isn't that the way how you or, uh, optimize over like a normal policy? Uh, normal actor critic, I guess. A normal actor cr critic usually just goes pi qi, but in their case, they do pi log, pi, log q. Uh, okay. Isn't that the uh, 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 reparameterization? Uh, trick that they're talking about in the paper? I think the reparameterization tricks comes in uh, when uh, they compute the action. 
Hmm. Yeah, well, this is a this is a common struggle that I have uh, when I read papers. Uh, in a lot of cases, um, the actual implementation, the code, doesn't really correspond to the doesn't necessarily correspond to the paper one hundred percent. There's some kind of variations uh, sometimes. Um, well, for implementations, we could try both. And from my experience, when you do the implementation, you always have to refer other people's uh, implementation to almost make yourself make your make your own works. Uh, so, how did how did the first implementer do? Uh, I haven't read any, um, so that's a more of a second week or third week task. Um, okay, never mind. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm going to say maybe something totally wrong, but uh, like in the TRPO algorithm, when they uh, like when they had to um, make calculations on the scale divergence, they approximated it with a Taylor series. With the what? Right. With the polynomial function, like the Taylor... Um, Taylor series? Taylor, Taylor approximation, you mean? Yes. That's okay. what they did in the TRPO, which is basically the first algorithm this whole Taylor divergence uh, just, just to be right. sure, if the original TRPO paper or some other implementation. Uh, I, I'm talking about the original CRPO paper, but you can uh, you can find this development in the spinning up page for the trust region policy optimization. Basically, I was thinking that maybe uh, the gradient of this expectation, like they they did the same thing again, like they probably approximated it into a polynomial function and implemented that mm -hmm. for the algebra. Yeah, probably. That's just stability. Uh, and when I was reading this paper, when I see how they optimize over the actor, um, which is um, this part, the argument, I just keep thinking about the PPL paper that I read. They also uh, were suggesting that in original TRPO paper, which I have not read, um, but they, they were doing something with the KL divergence uh, when they uh, do the optimization. And in the PPL paper, they basically uh, disregard, well, they, they use something instead of the KL divergence. And I was wondering. Yeah, the clipping. They use something? I think they. They use the clipping. Yeah, they use a clipping, yes. Uh, they use a clipping instead. And I wonder if there's a, a way for us to use a clipping instead of, instead of the KL divergence. But it doesn't seem to be this, it doesn't seem to be exactly the same thing though. No, it's I not. Think the clipping it's part not. Is, uh, regarding the safe safe region update for the policy, but I guess in soft actor critic they don't really care about the safety. Of the updates. <laughs> okay. Or other hypothesis is that uh, the exponential Q over the log partition is uh, already stable enough so we can update the policy without caring about the difference. Mm -hmm. That's something to. Uh, in fact, the PPO is supposed to be just a simplified uh, alternative to TRPO because of. Uh, the uh, em because empirically it performs uh, about just as well, if not better. But uh, in theory, like what they do are not the same thing at all. So it, it's it, like in theory they're not calculating calculating the same thing, uh -huh. but they just both implement this uh, safe region like concept, and that's pretty much where the similarities stop. I see. Well, they're they're all kind of saying I'm trying to make my policy move, but also I don't want it to move too much. That's that seems to be what this uh, delta term is doing. I'm trying to make my policy move as much possible, but I'm trying to minimize the, the also trying to minimize the move. And with the PPO, it's the same thing. I'm trying to maximize the policy, but. Uh, 
I also don't want to don't want it to move to what too much according to the clip. I think that's exactly the space region definition. Yeah. Well, they're <laughs> interesting work, definitely. Um, yeah. So I haven't, yeah, I haven't gotten too much time to implement it, uh, but that will be our next week activity uh, and uh, the week after uh, to sort of follow up on, uh, uh, to sort of follow up on this. Um, if that's okay with everyone, uh, please try to use the ClingRL code base when you do the implementation. Uh, try to keep keep some of the common structure, like the try not to modify uh, lines, uh, so that uh, you only touch the algol algorithm logic part of the lines, uh, so that it will be easier for us to compare implementations and help each other to debug. Um, anyone have any questions or comments? Um, okay, uh, and I would also like to point out uh, that if you're interested, please sign up on this Google Sheet uh, if you want to do a presentation. Uh, I personally found it very fulfilling uh, because I need to do a presentation, so I spend a lot of time trying to read the related literature. And for the implementation week, um, if no one is doing the presentation, I'll also be doing the presentation. Uh, but if you're interested, please sign up. Uh, I will also post this again in the Slack channel. Um, and a couple things maybe I would want to also mention is uh, if you just want to sort of get more familiar with the code base, feel free to uh, try to modify the A2C file and try to make it into the reinforcement impl implementation. Uh, since A2C uh, is basically a more powerful algorithm than Reinforce adding a lot of more components, uh, if you're creating the Reinforce, it should be just deleting a bunch of lines and try to make it work. But that should help you uh, with the deep, with having more experience with debugging uh, this sort of common structure that we're going to use. Um, but yeah, that's sort of, uh, I don't have anything else for now. Um, is there anything else that every uh, anybody would like to uh, discuss? I wonder, is this the only soft actor critique related paper you read? Uh, I also read um, a couple more papers like the soft queue learning and the the equivalence between the policy gradient and the soft queue learning, but I haven't read, um, I guess, any other paper on this specific topic. I just checked my stack of paper, and there is basically five consecutive, almost consecutive papers where the soft actor algorithm is built piece by piece, starting from the reinforcement learning with deep energy based policies. I think that's the first paper. Mm -hmm. And from there, they start uh, by building on top of other algorithms, so maybe it can uh, be useful. Yeah, if you can or, send if you can send that to the Slack channel, um, uh, those okay. five papers you were referencing, I think it, it'll also help everyone else to sort of have this timeline of the development of SAC. And and I think you could also put it in the resources section of the slides. You know, the useful resources. Uh -huh. uh, the second slide, uh, I think you could add those papers over there as well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I can definitely modify the the slides afterwards. And yeah. uh, in fact, so let me see. Um, oopsie, that's not what I want. Uh, there is one other thing that I wanted to talk about in today's uh, meeting. Okay. So yeah, uh, when you look at uh, these uh, soft versions of equations, like soft Bellman residual or soft Bellman backup, uh -huh. uh, there is some some difference between the original Bellman residual and the original, like the Bellman backup uh, that is given in the Bato uncertain book. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. Uh, 
uh, I would really love to know if anyone is uh, if anyone has some idea about how these two differ exactly. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Does anyone have any experience with uh, the things that uh, Namal was talking about? I, I understood it partially, but I'm not exactly sure if my understanding is right. That's why I wanted to um, ask if anyone else is uh, familiar with this. Mm -hmm. uh, well, my personal experience with the, the sort of thing, the sort of math tools that these algorithms are using is basically the case that um, in a lot of situations, they'll modify the math, uh, the math tool in terms of their notation and somehow your, the way you use it. So you don't necessarily can recognize the original, uh, I guess, Spellman backup operator by just looking at it. But if you dig deeper, uh, I think- No, no, you actually can, because I sort of like made a table in my, uh, in my notes and I saw, uh, I, I wrote down both the equations side by side. Uh -huh. I am able to see the difference but I just don't understand why this is the software version. So what exactly does it mean? Mm -hmm. That is something that is not clear to me. That is, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, if you want to show, uh, show, it, show your notes to everyone, uh, I can stop the present uh, presentation and you can do that. Uh, or if you want, you could also put it in the Slack channel when you're reading uh, the paper. Uh, I think uh, anyone uh, participating in the month of development cycle would love to take a look. Uh, okay, I'll do that later then. Because okay. It's kind of messed in my notes right now. Yeah, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's probably a lot of. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I would imagine it's probably going to be uh, uh, math heavy. So I'll also share the folder, uh, which I forgot to do, which will contain um, all of the meetings, uh, all of the files, uh, so that we have all of them in one place. I'll also tag, i also pin the message somewhere so that uh, you don't have to look through the all of the message history um what was, uh, i was gonna mention something but i kind of forgot <laughs> um, Oh, yeah. Uh, just be quick. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, uh, well, uh, you can go ahead and I'll, I'll pull up something in the meantime. Uh, what uh, default environment should we use for the continuous session space? Uh, so uh, I haven't provided a full list, but if you open the uh, reinforced learning, uh, the, the Excel sheet, uh, there's the gym environments and you can sign uh, up. I Hmm? I saw in your A to C continuous, you are using PyBullet. Yes. Half cheetah. Uh, beg your pardon. Uh, should we use it as a standard for this implementation? Um. So, uh, in the list of gym environments, I actually haven't added anything from the PY Bullet, but I think uh, if you want, you can definitely add it. So uh, it doesn't have to be myself adding. Uh, all of the gym environments, right? Uh, if you're, if there is a some gym environments that you're really interested in solving, uh, by all means, put it put it in there so that uh, either you can sign up or you're hoping someone else to sign up. Uh, but then, but the way you sign up is basically put your name in some of these places, right? Uh, and the reason why I think we should use PY Bullet simply because it's um, it's not like Mujuko that is uh, proprietary. I have to like. Uh, go to their website and apply for some sort of uh, apply for a student license that expires in a year. It just seems to be some sort of hassle uh, that I would rather not have to deal with. Oh yeah, uh, and the thing I was going to mention is uh, for our current plan uh, after the a uh, after SAC, uh, I, w I was originally thinking about implementing DDPG and TD three. But because of the recent developments, uh, I was wondering if uh, people will be interested in implementing this paper instead, uh, which is the Mu Zero paper. Uh, Mu Zero paper, uh, if anyone has heard about it, uh, where 
Seem, seems to be a, a lot of strong reactions. Uh, oh, uh, uh, that's a really hard uh, topic, to be honest. <laughs> Um, yeah, we can uh, we can alternatively also implement the, this uh, later down in a row. But it seems to me by just reading on it, um, it seems to be a self-contained reinforcement learning algorithm that could be applied to Jim, um, because of the the way they set it up. I guess you do have the uh, sort of the MCTS part that we could either use a library or probably not implement it ourselves. But it seems the algorithm by itself um, is self-contained, which means uh, to me that we can put it in a single file like this and just run it. So uh, I don't know. Um, what's your guys' opinion? Sure, why not? Once we are done with uh, mm. so that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I guess I'll also put up a vote in the uh, monthly dev sec, uh, monthly dev, just to That's yeah, maybe maybe right now or maybe at the end of our monthly development cycle, but just to get everyone's get everyone's opinion as far as whether we should uh, implement Mu zero versus the the plans that we originally have, um, simply because it's the <laughs> it's the state of the art. Uh, the model base are out right and i actually see this um, uh, someone trying to implement it i see this medium post which is always not a very trustworthy uh, source of information sometimes um but the guy <laughs> It doesn't seem to be all that complicated. It seems to be something that is self-contained and something that maybe we can just, um, maybe it's easier than we thought. <laughs> That's what I was trying to say, I guess. Since uh, I guess the, the important thing about the Mu0 is that it's a model-based uh, reinforcement learning algorithm that the model is learned. Uh, instead of a given the forward model, if we have a given, uh, if we need to deal with the forward model, uh, then we actually have to deal with game specific implementation, which wouldn't be made, uh, which would make itself not self contained. In other words, it doesn't, you can't use one file for all the gym environments. You have to find a forward model for all of the gym environments. But since uh, the Mu0 actually learns a model, uh, it will be self contained. So I think it, it might be interesting for us to implement either next month or the month following. But yeah, uh, afterwards I'll add these to. Uh, sorry, were you guys any anything? I just agree. Did you did you say you agree or disagree? Uh, I said that it sounded good. I'm sorry. That's it. Uh, I'm sorry, I, 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 I still didn't quite hear you. Did you say uh, it's not that good? No, it's okay. Oh, really? Oh, wh uh, wh wh why so? Um, I thought that it would be interesting to look at the paper next, although I think that uh, it's always it would always make it easier to understand if we kind of got around to implementing more algorithms before going to it, but it's it's it would be at least interesting to to look at the paper. I see, I see. Um, sorry, I'm still voice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a that's a valid point. Um, uh, Roslyn, were you saying something? Yes, if I'm not mistaken. You said that Mu0 is a model-based reinforcement learning algorithm. So maybe before going to Mu0, we might want to tone it down a little bit. <laughs> I don't know, just a suggestion. Right, 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 of course. Uh, yeah, that might be too ambitious. Um, I, I did read the uh, Mu0 paper, but of course not extensively. Um, but it seems yeah, that... It's, it's simple paper, hmm? which is not that bad. Um, yeah, it doesn't seem extremely complicated, especially with the model part. 
uh, what they claim is that their work is uh, in the model based RL domain. Uh, apparently, they claim um, they don't do a lot of model prediction. That's why it's simpler than uh, a majority of model based RL pre existing work. So, that's, that's the reason why I even thought about implementing it because they, they, they advertise it as easy uh, model based RL, I guess. I see. But I could be wrong, and this is something for us to evaluate later as well. Um, but yeah, uh, I see Dossman uh, put something in the uh, um, in the Slack channel. I would uh, definitely try to add it to the slides uh, for everyone to see. And Dossman, are you? Who are you in in the participant list? I am. Uh... Oh, you're Roslyn. I see. I see. Yes, I'm also Dosman. Yes. I see. I see. I thought I thought Dosman is your is your first name. <laughs> I see. Um, yeah, that'll be. Uh, yeah, I think we have a solid plan. Uh, so for the next week, we'll be starting our implementation, and then at the end of next week, also hopefully Friday, uh, we'll rotate probably to nine a.m. instead. Uh, at 9 a.m. EST, uh, I will again set up a event invite and hope uh, everyone could make it. Um, and if the time doesn't work for you um, in both of these sessions, the the, the 9 a.m. and the 4 p.m., uh, please let me know and I can work around that. Uh, right now, I, I'm just kind of hoping that we could rotate from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. so that we can have more people to join. Uh, so I think that all sums up for today. Uh, thank you, everyone, for coming. Uh, any any last questions or last comments? Let's do this. Yes, yes, let's do this. <laughs> yeah, it's an exciting time. Uh, I'm really looking forward towards this. When I was reading the paper, I was like, all right, I, I, I really want to implement this and see exactly what they mean in the paper. <laughs> Um, but yeah, that's great. Uh, well, thank you everyone for coming. Um, hope you have Thanks, a dude. wonderful weekend. Um, thank you. And I'll see you guys next time. All right.